Hi, I'm Kern Berry with the Difficult Conversations Project. In this video, I want to share with you one of the most helpful frameworks I've come across for successfully navigating difficult conversations. It comes from the book, Difficult Conversations, How to Discuss What Matters Most by Douglas Stone, Bruce Patton, and Sheila Heen. The framework is based on the author's insight that every difficult conversation is actually three conversations. The what happened conversation, the feelings conversation, and the identity conversation. Understanding what distinguishes these three conversations and how they interact can make a big difference in how your difficult conversation unfolds. I'm going to give you a quick overview of these three conversations using the metaphor of an iceberg. At the tip of the iceberg, just above the surface, is the what happened conversation. This is where most difficult conversations begin. Someone says or does something that triggers a conflict, and the conversation quickly becomes about who's right, who's wrong, and who's to blame. Difficult conversations often get stuck at this level, typically with unsatisfying results. Just below the what happened conversation is the feelings conversation. It's below the surface because often in a difficult conversation, our true feelings go unidentified and unexpressed. And that's unfortunate, because when you think about it, most difficult conversations are not really about what happened. They're about how we feel about what happened. That's why sorting out our feelings and bringing them to the surface is often necessary before a creative resolution to the conflict can be found. It's necessary, but it's not easy. One reason, say the authors, is that we tend to disguise uncomfortable or unacceptable feelings as emotions that we're better able to handle. For example, rather than admitting to feeling hurt by someone's actions, we might instead say that it made us angry. That's because admitting that we're hurt can make us feel too vulnerable. In addition to hurt, other feelings we commonly disguise with more acceptable emotions are shame, fear, sadness, self-doubt, jealousy, loneliness, and anxiety. While bringing our true feelings to the surface can feel risky, Doing so can have a dramatic and positive impact on the conversation's outcome. Expressing our feelings with authenticity and vulnerability can also quickly shift the energy of a conversation from one that's combative to one that's compassionate, opening the door for real communication to occur. The third and last conversation is the identity conversation. It's way down at the base of our iceberg because of the three conversations, it's the most subtle and the most challenging. The identity conversation is about understanding what this difficult conversation seems to be saying about you. You may not realize it, but difficult conversations are often difficult, say the authors, because they can disrupt our sense of who we are in the world or highlight what we hope we are but fear we are not. Untangling this threat to our sense of self is what the identity conversation is all about. More specifically, it requires answering the question, in what ways does this conversation threaten my sense of self-worth? Now that's a big question, but the authors help us narrow it down by identifying three core sense of self issues often at work in any difficult conversation. Am I competent? Am I a good person? Am I worthy of love? As with the feelings conversation, bringing to awareness how a difficult conversation threatens our sense of self is often essential to reaching a satisfying resolution. As the authors state, oftentimes making the identity conversation explicit can help you get to the heart of what is really going on. You'll be astounded how often difficult conversations are wrapped up in both people reacting to what the conversation seems to be saying about them. So there you have it. An overview of the Difficult Conversations framework from the book, Difficult Conversations, How to Discuss What Matters Most. I hope you found it helpful. Obviously, the book goes into much more detail, and I highly recommend it. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about my work, and especially my free workshop on the art and science of difficult conversations, please visit my website, difficultconversationsproject.org. Thanks for watching.